Good morning, Faith Family Out of East Church. How are you this morning? Blessed. There you go. I don't know about you, I'm happy to be here. I'm not a new face, I swear. I try to come as much as I can when I can. I do see a lot of new faces today. We're glad you're here today. This is definitely a divine appointment. You're not here by accident. You should have received a welcome packet if you're new today. And inside that welcome packet is some information about our church and a card. If you could please fill that out and put it in our offering pocket, we promise not to send you junk. We just want to formally greet you. And it tells you about our church, too, why we do what we do. Why we uh, pray in tongues, why we run in the church, why we laugh in the church. We have scriptures for everything we do, okay? And there are actually some of these are in the in the packet. So please, if you get a, one of those visitors' cards, please turn them in today. I only have two announcements today, and I'm going to get them right. Silver Connection will meet uh, next Saturday. Is that the 15th? Saturday, right? Uh, the 15th, and it'll be at noon here at the church, okay? Silver Connection doesn't mean you have to have gray hair, because some people have natural colored hair and help with that hair and all that kind of stuff, okay? I think it's 50 and up, is that right, Brother Bob? Okay, 50 and up, right? Okay, and tonight we have a service tonight at 6.30. Please come back, you'll be blessed. I don't know what it is, but it's usually good. Um, what are we doing next? War on Jack! Pastor Sherry! Praise the Lord! We can clap better than that! Yeah. How far has the Lord delivered you already? Woo. Has He not saved you to the uttermost? Yes. Has He not healed us to yes. the uttermost? Yes. Is He excessive in His love for us? Yes. Then we can give Him a real clap. Let's give Him a really hearty clap. Yeah. Amen! You. I'm glad. Uh, I wanted to uh, do a prayer cloth before we receive the offering this morning. Is that all right with you guys? We have uh, our brother in New Smyrna. He has a friend that is um, in his like fourth stage of cancer, and we're going to believe God. Amen. And uh, the Bible says to call for the elders of the church and to lay hands on cloths, aprons, handkerchiefs. Amen. And uh, it says that. Um, the diseases departed out of them when the cloths were laid upon them. Amen? Amen. And I love it out of there in Acts 19.11. Uh, in fact, that was the scriptures I was standing on when I went to Croatia, how God did special miracles yes. through the hands of Paul. Yes. And we saw people getting out of wheelchairs. We saw many ears open. We saw growth go, go down. Amen? Amen? Children were touched. So God did special miracles through the hands of Pastor Sherry, through the hands of the Apostle Paul. So we're believing for healing in the cloth today. Does anybody else need healing? Do they, anybody else need a prayer cloth? Quickly, if you need one, lift your hand. Can we get one more? Uh, Pastor Gina, we'll get one more over here. And I want to invite the elders up. We need two more. Praise God. I want to invite the elders up, and we're just going to lay hands on these. Praise God. Pastor Dave, Pastor Gail. Two, yeah, two more, praise God. We'll just, there we go. You guys stretch out your hands, amen? We're just going to lay hands on this right now. And what's the other two areas we're needing prayer for? Okay, and is there a particular, just, we'll, okay, surgery, and what was the other one, Dottie? Sonia's dad surgery I didn't hear you, hon. Sonia's dad. Okay, all right. Marcus. Okay, all right. Okay. Well, we're speaking healing right now into that knee. We speak it right now from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Healing is being made complete right now. And we thank you for that back. I sensed, I saw, brother, the power of God shooting into her back when you lifted your hand. So just lift your hand right now and thank the Lord it's done. Amen. It's done. Do we believe that, guys? Yes. His word is a lightning rod. Amen. He quickens his word and he watches over it to perform it. So it's being quickened in her body right now. Now, Father, we thank you right now by the name of Jesus. You said as we brought these handkerchiefs, aprons, claws, that the evil spirits must depart out of them. And we thank you that health will begin to flow right now into them. 
We speak to you, John, in that fourth stage of cancer, and we command you to be raised up right now. You know the Lord, you love the Lord, and we call you healed right now. From the top of your head to the soles of your little bitty feet. Ha ha. We thank you, Father God, as you're healing, you're just tickling him right now. You are tickling him in that hospital. You are touching on him. You are you are loving him and wooing him and drawing him right now. Your presence is overshadowing him. And we see it right now. You're going into that hospital. Lord, you went into the dingy, the dungy, the your feet were dirty with ministering to people. You went about all the city preaching, teaching, and healing. And we thank you that you said that I've commissioned your disciples to do the same. So now we lay hands, we stretch forth our hands, we speak mighty miracles. Over this husband, we speak healing into his body. We thank you. We quicken your word now. We provoke it to perform, and you will watch over it, and you will cause it to do exactly what we claim that it will do according to your word now. Thank you, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's done. Let's give the Lord a shout. Amen. Can you deliver these? Can you deliver somebody? I need just one. The rest of these, you guys come get them. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Well, we, 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 my, my goodness, excuse me, we should have prayed. Uh, Pastor Stephen Cheryl, they're both fighting with illness today, but they're the healed, amen? And so we just pray that way right now, amen? We speak life and healing over them. Cheryl, we speak to your body. We curse that virus right now. Pastor Steve, we curse that virus in your body right now. You're the healed. You're whole. You're the head, not the tail. You're above and not beneath. We thank you that health is being made complete right now. The top of their head to the soles of their feet. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. You know, I didn't even think about not coming to church today because my husband didn't come. I just come, amen. amen. And I just, I, I was like, do I want him to be here? Of course, I miss him. But you know, I never think, well, I need to lay out, you know. It's like, I don't have a ticket to lay out. I want to be here. I'm not preaching this morning. Pastor James is preaching. woo And uh, I could have just said, oh, I'm going to stay home and take, to, take care of Pastor Steve. No, I want to be in the house of God. Amen. amen. I want to be smack dab in the will of God. How about yeah, you? Yeah. Praise God. Well, we have been getting debts canceled in this church. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, recently, when I asked people to stand, how many people have had some miraculous debts and some things canceled? 70% of the congregation. Hallelujah. That's amazing. Right? We're on debt. Seventy percent of the congregation stood. We're not getting off of this, are we now? We are getting out of debt, amen, and getting money in the bank. College tuitions are being paid for. Houses are getting paid off. Medical bills are getting paid off or canceled, right? Amen. The things that we need, God has said he'll supply all of our needs according to his riches, right? Not according to our riches, thank God, because we don't have any, amen? But he has them, right? And he's going to bring them down, amen? And so we thank God for that. And I just want to encourage you in the word today to keep your faith active, amen? As an ushers, come on ahead. If you need an offering envelope, you can be filling it out as I minister. But I just want to give you a few examples of five things you can say out loud over your finances. Anybody interested in hearing what to say? We don't need to say, I can't afford it. Come on. Amen. You know, I would rather, honestly, I would rather cuss than say I can't afford it because it's it's it has no value like I can't afford it does. So if you're walking in a supermarket and your children are standing there or you're in a store and oh, can we get this? No, we can't afford it. You just cussed. Because my God says I'll supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. Now we've all done it. If you just you know, have been talking about, hey, I've been getting challenged in believing. That's okay. That's why we come to church, to encourage each other. Amen? Right. I'm dealing with looking for a new car. I'm trying to find the new car. I won't be discouraged. I'm going to find the car that God wants me to have. Amen? And so we all can fight discouragement when we're getting into a new area or a new realm. Amen? If you're in a new realm, you're going to be challenged. That's right. Right? Yes. Come on. Yes. Right? You know, I am not going to give my 13-year-old uh, daughter the keys to my car because she's never rode in a car 
by herself to drive, right? But I can guarantee you when she turns of age, she's going to learn how to drive because I'm going to teach her. And we're going to have fun learning, praise God. And she's going to know how to do all that stuff. She's going to know how to take care of herself, right? But I don't expect her to know right away. Amen? And so when you're in a new realm, there's new challenges. But you want to get to that realm, don't you? Don't you want to be more blessed than you've ever been? More prosperous than you've ever been? Why? So we can be blessed and say, oh, how fat and blessed we are. No. We're a blessing to be a blessing. Amen? And, and when God le raises us to a new level, we got to remember, what, what's the level of our giving? Raise that too. Amen? Raise, challenge the, yourself. Challenge yourself. Am I doing what God wants me to do? And if you're doing what God wants you to do, the blessings are going to come in. But there may be a stretching. Stretching is good, though, because it means you're going up and you're growing. Amen? And we all want to grow in our faith. Isn't that right? And so some things that we can say over our monies, because we're blessed. He said we're blessed. Did he not say that? He said we're blessed. We're the head and not the tail and above and not beneath. Right? And so we can say... Same thing here. The first thing we can say is that obey and serve him. So that we spend our days in prosperity and our years in pleasure. That's Job 36.11. We obey and serve him. So we spend our days in plenty. Not in poverty, but in plenty. That's a good faith confession. We spend our days in plenty. Hallelujah. Amen. We spend our, day, we spend our days in plenty and in prosperity and the years in pleasure. I like to have years in pleasure. How about you? Yes. I'm not like those old guys in Hee Haw where they sing mm. <laughs> That's it. We know, those, we know that song, but we need to maybe change the words, right? Uh -oh. And so, we're blessed coming in, we're blessed going out, we're blessed everywhere we go, right? We can sing other things than that, amen? The second thing we need to say is shout for joy! Because we're glad that favor, he's favored us. He's favored us, has he not? Let them say continually the Lord is magnified, which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. So we can shout for joy because we know he is, he's got pleasure when we're prosperous. That's right. Amen? He doesn't want the devil and his kids to have all the money. Come on. Right. Come on now. He doesn't want the devil and his kids going out there smoking, chewing, choking, and stroking, whatever. He wants us blessing orphanages, raising up Bibles in other countries, right? Taking care of, care of widows and orphans and doing the things that Jesus would do. Isn't that right? Going into all the world and preaching the gospel, yeah. taking kingdoms for the Lord and not the devil. Yeah. Amen? And so God's going to be with us, is he not? Yeah. That's Psalm 35, 27. So we can shout for joy. Let's just go ahead and shout by faith. We got it. Glory! Yeah. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just got to shout it out. Amen? You got a tough stain in your life, just shout it out, right? You got a tough stain in your prosperity or your checkbook, just shout it out. Praise God. Number three, another thing that we can say is, save me now. I beseech thee, O Lord. I pray this. Lord, send forth your prosperity now. Now. Now, I'm going to stop right there because that will preach. I'm going to preach today. We'll get to the other five later, or the other two later. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the time for prosperity. Say it. Now is the time for prosperity. Say it again. Now is the time for prosperity. Did he not just say it in his if he said it, then we need to believe it, right? He said it, we believe it, and we shall have it. We need to remember to activate our faith. You know, there are people that will go around and they say, I'm in faith, I'm in faith, I'm in faith. But they're not in faith because their confession stinks. Their confession is, well, one day, one day, one day God will bless me. One day God will heal me. No, when is he going to bless you? He said now. Right? When's he going to heal you? He did it over 2,000 years ago. So if we can receive the healing manifestation now. Amen? But see, we have an adjustment to make. We want to put everything on God, don't we? Have you ever done that? God, if you... Da, 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 da. No, no, no. We are the ones that need to make the adjustment. Amen? Um, I just watched on YouTube, no, actually Facebook, uh, a mother. Did you guys see that with her baby in the coma? Anybody see that? Oh, good, just a few. It was incredible, wasn't it? Yeah. 
I'm telling you, we're talking about now faith because faith is now, right? Faith is now. If faith is tomorrow, it's not faith. Faith is now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen, right? So faith is now. So this woman of God had a baby, and the baby was in a coma for eight months. Eight months. Cutest little baby. Oh, my goodness. And uh, she says, I'm done with this. She took the baby out of the hospital. True story. You can read it on Facebook, YouTube. She took the baby out of the hospital. The doctor says, oh, no, you don't need to be doing that. Well, she says, I'm doing it. It's my daughter, and I'm taking her to church. Amen. She took that baby to church, sat on the front row, and just began to worship God. People came up and asked her about her baby. Well, the baby's been in a coma for eight months. Well, the pastor got a hold of it, so they just began to praise the Lord, came down, and laid hands on that baby. They laid hands on that baby, just like what we just did with the laying hands of those cloths. They just laid hands on that baby. That baby didn't move. That baby was just stiff. Beautiful baby, but he just, she was just out. Had been, been that way the whole time. 24 minutes later, the baby's eyes begin to blink. She begins to move her lips. She begins to move around. They begin to praise the Lord. And I love what the pastor said. She said, um, you, congregation, we're going to praise in this child's destiny. Amen. What we do right now is going to set her up for life. Yes. That bless me. And, and as they begin to praise the Lord, the manifestation of her healing began to rupture right there in the middle of everybody. God and everybody. God, the devil, and everybody else. And that baby began to move around. And that baby was instantly, 24 minutes later, is instantly healed in my book. That's pretty oh, yeah. darn good. Amen. And I love what she said. You, you need to ride your bicycle. You need to praise the Lord. You need to be able to shout and run and dance in children's church. You need to be able to go to school. And that baby was instantly healed because God is all God. He's waiting for us to provoke him. Because the Lord is here. What's you going to do with it? We're going to take it at her, amen. And we're going to lift up our offerings and we're going to praise him. Because this is what we do around here, amen. We belong to God. Isn't that right? So can we just believe God over our finances today? Let's just stretch out our hand if you have an offering lifted up. If you don't have an offering, we love you. Lift your hand. You can be God's offering today, amen. Let's just say that, Father God, I believe in the prosperity of your servant. So thank you, Lord. We're out of debt. Every need is paid. Every bill is met. Amply supplied for every good work. Father God, thank you. Faith Family Outreach Church is blessed beyond measure. We have amply provision, ample provision for every good work and every charitable donation. at this church. So we don't have to curse debt because we have no debt. Ha, ha, ha. And it will be the same with our households in Jesus' name. Amen? Give the Lord a shout because he's doing it. run our offerings up here. God's a faith God. He's a now God. Let's do something we don't always do. Let's just run. Let's leave. Let's believe God. He's got a good thing coming. Amen? Because the blessings are coming our way now.
We're going to dismiss our kids right now, our tiny treasures, our toddlers, our nurseries to the back, our king's kids ages 5 to 12 are to the back, and our youth group, youth group ages uh, 12 to 19 is meeting back here. With Pastor Dwayne, hallelujah. Now let's all of us stand up and bless the Lord. Amen. Glory to God.
time. Praise the Lord. You may be seated if you can. Unless you want to run and shout and jump. Go right ahead. That's fine by me. It won't bother me a bit. Praise the Lord. The more moving, the better. Well, for those of you who don't know me, I'm James. I'm one of the associates here. I didn't get a chance to meet all of you. But welcome. We're glad you're here today. And uh, you're going to be blessed. Amen. 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 Can anybody testify that you are going to be blessed? Amen. Who has already been blessed? Amen. So the blessing is going to continue, right? Yes. So it's coming to my house. The blessing is coming to my house. And it's coming to me right now today. Hallelujah. You got your expector turned on? Yeah. Are you hungry today? Because yeah. you know you're going to get what you expect to receive. You're only going to get out what you put in. In other words, who's ever siphoned the gas tank before? Raise your hand. Anybody in the house? Okay, there's some of you that maybe don't even know what we're talking about. Let me explain it to you. It's like if you run out of gas in your car and you need gas and say you've got another car uh, that's home but it ain't running, but it's got gas in it. And so there's gas there that you can have. And you gotta, to get it, you got to siphon it out. So you stick your hose down in there, and you? <laughs> it tastes good, yeah, that's right. No, it don't taste good. But you prime the pump. You, you suck on a little bit, and then, and then you, you, you sense it. It's getting there to the top, because you don't want it to go, go in your mouth. But when it comes up high enough, you tip the hose into the other can. And then there starts a transfer from one tank to the other tank. How do you know that God is infinite? He's got a reservoir. He's got a tank full of what you need. And you need to siphon it out today with your faith. Get your hose out. Hook it into the Holy Ghost and start to draw. Because it's not all up to the speaker. I mean, we can say things, but if there's no life in it, it's dead. But you don't want dead bread, right? You don't, you don't like stale bread. You like stale potato chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gross, right? They're nice and soft or they're yucky and just should have just not even bothered with them back in the oven or something so they get cooked again. Well, we don't like stale things. Not here, not in the Word. It's got to be fresh, full of life. And so we have something for you today. Praise God. Glory to God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for your word. I thank you, Father, that your word is written down on pages. It's written down in our hearts. The living word of the city that you're thrown at your right hand. Ever living to make intercession for us. And thank you, Lord, that you sent your word back here to give life and resurrection to the word. To breathe life into it. So that we know that it is real and living and true. Because he's the one that takes the words on the page and makes them life. So Lord, today we ask you for utterance to speak that which you'd have us to say. Ears to hear for everyone in the house today. Eyes to see and a heart to receive and get what you're communicating to us today. Lord, we can do nothing without you. We're helpless without you. We're helpless to deliver and we're helpless to receive. So, Lord, today, open all our hearts and minds and do in us that which is pleasing in your sight. Because you're working in us both to will and to do of your good pleasure. Put us up into the image of Christ, causing us to be all that you destined and created us to be. So, Father, today, help us to receive this word so that we can increase and accomplish your plans in our life that you have for us. And walk in the good path that you ordained that we should walk in them. Yes. You predestined and pre-planned a good path for us. Yes. So Lord, today, if I fear not on it, set it on there today. Yes. 
And if they're on there, encourage us, Lord. Make our light, make our path brighter. Because yeah. the entrance of your word gives light, Lord. And it brings understanding. Yeah. And it's truth that makes us free. <laughs> and so, Father, we thank you for it. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And we give you all the glory and the purpose not to be hearers only, but effective and effectual doers of that word that is sown in our hearts today. And we give all the glory to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, if you have a Bible, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, and we will get started. Praise the Lord. Sometimes I uh, notice when I minister, I have a tendency to give definitions sometimes. But definitions are good. It helps you to understand things. And once you've got a definition of something, you can see what it is, you can draw it out more. And you can understand it and see how it fits in your life. Because it's not always good just to hear something and be inspired. And, well, what did that mean? But it's good to know what it means with the inspiration. So we're going to just kind of walk. We're going to start walking this morning. And we're going to go on a little journey. And I believe you're going to be encouraged today. Amen. Amen. Who's got needs? Everybody, most everybody has some kind of a financial need. Financial, raise your hand. It's okay. I got some. I could use more. Praise the Lord. I haven't quite arrived yet where God wants me, but we're on the way. So, let's get started. Verse 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Beginning in verse number one. Oh, that's not the Holy Ghost. He's going to talk to you right here today. Those are too slow for him. He, he, he communicates at the speed of thought. So, Amen. Uh, you know, phones are too slow. But praise the Lord. If that's, uh, praise the Lord. Moreover, verse one. Moreover, brethren, we do, or we would make you to know of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. See, Paul's writing to the Corinthian church, and he's going to start telling them about the grace that was on the churches in Macedonia. And he's going to explain to them their situation, and then he's going to tell them how to increase. It says in verse 2, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their great or, or and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. These guys were poor. The church in Macedonia, the churches in Macedonia were poor. They were like beggarly poor. They were indigent poor. They were so poor that it describes a level of poverty in which real hardship and deprivation are suffered and comforts of life are wholly or completely lacking. And I, when I think of this, I kind of think of like people on the street. Not everybody wants to be there, but some do. But the, but the poverty level that the churches in Macedonia were in were so hard and so depraved, they didn't even have the comforts of life. And, and in this country, people whine if they get a little inconvenienced. Here, Liberality talks about singleness. It talks about sincerity. It talks about sincerity without dissimulation, which is hypocrisy. It's not self-seeking. So, in the translation, it says, how while passing through great trouble, their boundless joy, even amid their deep poverty, has overflowed to increase their generous liberality. 
Verse 3. For to their power I bear record, or their ability. He's bearing record of their ability. Now listen, you got to keep in mind, these guys are in deep poverty. And he's writing to somebody else to tell about them. They're in deep poverty. So if, you, if, so if you're in poverty today, or you've been struggling, and you're pressed, and you're in the straits, and you're in financial difficulties that are hard, and it seems like it's hard to bear, be encouraged today. There is hope for you. Yes. These guys were there. Yes. And it's in the book. Yes. And if it's in the book, it's for you. Yes. It's for me. Yes. And if we do what's in the book, the way the book says to do it, then we're going to get the blessings the book says we have. Amen. That are ours. Yes. Yes. Amen. So, I want to say one more thing before we uh, go on to this. Um, you can be in deep poverty and have a liberal or be a liberal and generous giver. Amen. Amen. There are millionaires and billionaires who are poor. They might have a lot of paper in the bank, but they're bankrupt. That's right. They are poverty stricken in spirit and in heart. Right. And they got ten thousand insurances to try to protect them and themselves and all their stuff in case they get sued or something happens because of the money they got. They want to protect it because they think everybody's out to get it. They don't understand that is not really prosperity. Amen. A lot of money isn't prosperity. Amen. It's having enough at the end of the week and some left over. You have all sufficiency for all things. Yes. You, you, you don't lack. It doesn't necessarily mean that you got billions or millions in the bank. You could, but that doesn't mean you're wealthy. It means you got a lot of money. And to think that because I have a lot of money I'm wealthy is a misconception. It's a deception. If you have a lot of money, it means you got a lot of money. That's all that means. What are you doing with it? Because you can have a lot of money and then just be sitting up there collecting dust. Come on, that's right. Earning interest. For what? What are you using it for? So it's not how much you have that's prosperity. Although if you're prospering, you should have more because it's a result of prospering. Prosperity starts in your heart. Amen. It starts in the spirit. Yes. It doesn't start in your pocketbook. Come on. It gets in your heart. It gets in your mind. You renew your mind to the Word of God. You practice the Word. And then it begins to grow in you. Vision begins to increase. God begins to show you things and do things in you. Begins to talk to you about things. And so whether you realize or not, as your vision's growing, your faith is growing. Because God is showing you this because He's planning you to bigger and better things that He has planned for you to walk in and to do. And if you and so He wants you to start believing for the prosperity for those things. So you should increase, but just but if you just have money but no faith, you have money but no love, you have money but no generosity, you're broke. So what if you can go buy all the things in the world? Who cares? It's all going to burn up. Come on. This guy has no eternal value. Amen. Zero. It's only good for now. And you can't take it with you. Amen. But you can, like Jesus said, store up treasure in heaven. Amen. Now you need stuff here. You do need money here to get the things done that God wants us to get done. But if we're not good stewards and we can't be trusted with it, and we're not faithful, it ain't coming. That's right. People think it is. Just because I sow an offering, I dump it in the bucket, I make a few little confessions, it's coming my way. Not so. Not if you don't qualify. That's right. Your heart ain't right. Your motives are wrong. You got wrong reasons for it. it ain't coming your way. Amen. If you can't be trusted with it, forget it. You squandered on yourself, it ain't happening. <clears throat> So, we're going to look, and don't be discouraged, now just hang on. <laughs> Hold on, we're going 
believe you're better than that. And, and if you didn't want to go with Jesus and, and be right and, and move forward, you wouldn't be here. Amen. So be encouraged. See, prosperity is success on your journey. Yes. Right? Yes, it's one of the Bible definitions of, success, of, of prosperity. Success in your journey. Yes. I mean, wherever God's taking you want to succeed, right? Yes, sir. You, you, so you want to prosper. So you succeed. It's successful in completion. Amen. So he says here, if I bear a record, or I can testify that to the utmost of their power, and even beyond their power, they have of their own free will given help. That's the women. They were willing of themselves to give. Now verse 4 says, praying, see, they were, they were willing to give because there was people in need. They were given to other saints. Now listen close. It says, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. Now, here in this verse, fellowship and ministering, fellowship is partnership or participation or distribution. They were begging Paul with all earnestness in seriousness. Paul, let us get involved. Let us give. Let me read it to you out of the, uh, the way of the thing. It says, with earnest entreaty, they begged from us the favor of being allowed to share in the service now being rendered to God's people. These guys were poor, beggarly poor, indigent, did not have the comforts of life. But do you see the heart? They were begging Paul, let us give. Let us do something. This is what we have. We want to give it. We want to help them. We want to help their brother and sister in the Lord. Amen. And they were freely willing to do it of their own accord. Amen. They didn't even say God led them to do it. But the heart that's in you, put in there by Christ, it says the love of God shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit given to us. So when we see our brother in need, our heart goes out. And we got our, and it doesn't necessarily have to be an emergency. You see your brother in need and you want to help him. Do it. Don't have to wait for lightning from the sky. Amen. So much direction from God seems almost seemingly natural. We miss it. Because they're always looking for something special. i got to pray about this. i got to pray about that. Why don't you just do something? And if it ain't right, God will check you on it. Because on. sometimes you don't get direction until you start moving. Amen. A lot of times you don't get direction until you start to go do something. On, and then if you're slow enough in that direction, you okay, all right, Lord, you don't want me to do that, okay. But he was waiting for you to do something. And when you said, no, I don't, I don't want you to go that way, go this way, do this. So now you got direction what to do. So go do that. What is that? That's being simply led by the Spirit of God. Amen. Simple, easy, it's not difficult. Sometimes we miss the Holy Ghost's communications to us because we're used to Him being in us. Remember when you first got born again, how much real He was real to you? And then it seemed like with time, it kind of faded. It didn't fade. You got used to His presence. You got used to Him being with you and in you. And sometimes he has to come on us in a stronger way to remind us and, and arrest our attention 
and to get our focus back. But he wants us to walk daily with him. Just like if you're walking down the street with somebody. You're conscious they're there. You know they're there. Your ears are open. They, you might not be talking. But you just kind of look around, just going through the day, enjoying your day. And they say something to you. They, they might actually be over there. But the Holy Ghost is on the inside. He'll never leave. He's that close. He is joined to the Lord as one spirit. He's in you, you're in Him. That's why sometimes when He gives you a hudge or a leading or a direction, they are flowed up to you sometimes, just seemingly like your own thought. But wait a minute. Did you stop and think it? No, you didn't stop and think it. But now you got an answer. Don't dismiss it. Prove it out. And remember it. Because as you do, you will begin to recognize more and more and more on a daily basis, moment by moment, his communications to you. And what's going to happen? You are going to change. Your things in life aren't going to shake and rattle you. When things come to you, it's, you're just because your ears are open right in here. You got your spiritual ears open, listening to what the Holy Spirit's going to say to you about what's coming in your direction, about what you're hearing, about what you're seeing. Because you're constantly looking to Him, acknowledging Him in all your ways. We're not talking about you can't be doing something through your daily life. I got work to do. I got to do this. I got to do that. I, I got to focus on this. I got to concentrate. Okay, concentrate. But keep your spiritual ear open. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like, yeah, I'm doing something. I'm working in my office or on my job or wherever I'm at. There's all this stuff going on, people communicating to me, but when the boss speaks, that voice overrides everybody else's voice, right? When the boss says something, you hear them. You know their voice. The Holy Ghost is the boss. He's the one we need to listen to above all else. Because he's going to give us the word. And he ain't going to give us something that ain't in the word. But in your daily life and you need direction and you're going through your day, just keep an ear open. Looking to hear from Him. Looking for His input on everything you do. Maybe that's a better way to say it. You're going through the day and you're doing what you got to do, but at the same time, there's a it's like your eyes are on Him, paying attention to Him, Checking, just keeping the line open to see if he's going to say something about what you're doing or what's going on or give you some kind of help, whatever that help might be. And then he'll be there. So, so if the Lord, if you get that in your heart to give to somebody and you see their need, you know, if you see your brother in need and you shut your bowels of compassion, the Bible says, how dwells the love of God in you? Now, I'm not saying you got to meet everybody's need under the sun because there are no reason. you got resources. But what I'm saying is if you see it and it touches you and you want to do something, you don't have to wait and pray 10 days, God, should I do something? Come on. Do it. Amen. Because here it says, I can testify that their uttermost, that the utmost of their power, even beyond their power, they have of their own free will given help. With earnest entreaty, they begged from us the favor. <clears throat> they were begging Paul to be allowed to share in the service of the ministering to the saints. Are you getting that? They were in deep poverty. I'm reminded of a story. <clears throat> there was a lady one time went to a church. Keith Moore tells us. I don't know if I'm going to get, I'm going to get it right. But there was a lady that came to a church and Phyllis had a word of knowledge that there was somebody in the, in the service who I think it was like $600. You need $600 and they had the bill with them and they came that day and they had everybody bow their head and raise your hand if that's you. They raised their hand. It's okay. And then they were felt 
they, they felt they had to take up an offering. So they took up an offering and it got met and they were pretty much done and they were going to go on and people started standing up saying, hey, hey. He said, what? What's wrong? He said, well, I wanted to get in on that. I wanted to give in to someone else too. Says, I wanted to give in on that too. And people all over the congregation wanted to get in on it to help meet that person's need. That's what they did here. Do it. And be blessed. If the God puts that on your heart, I mean, if you see somebody in need, you just want to do it so you can bless them. Not so you can get something back. They did it. They were no more expecting anything from anybody. Don't give any gift to anybody expecting anything in return from them. Not even a thank you. As if it's a gift and you're doing it because you want to bless them and that's your whole motive and nothing more. If they don't thank you, they don't even acknowledge you, you don't care because you wasn't expecting nothing from them anyways. But you did it for their benefit and nothing. God will take care of you. Some people give and sometimes I've been given to and almost cringe because I know they're expecting something back from me. Even a thank you. And I've had people rebuke me because I momentarily got to thank them and they come to me and say, you didn't even thank me. Well, why would you give it to me anyway? That's you want right. to bless me or you want something from me? Come on, Pastor. If I'm blessing you, I'm not obligating you Amen. to nothing. Amen. A gift is free with no strings Amen. and no expectations Amen. from the person who's the recipient. Amen. Yeah, we should be nice and we should thank people. But don't give for that purpose. That ain't right. And if that's the way you give, make adjustment today because it ain't pleasing to the Lord. And it's one of the things that will hog up your ability to receive. Amen. Let's move on. Are you receiving? Is this helping anybody? Yes. Good. Praise the Lord. Our right, ministering is a, attendance, aid, relief, or service. So they want Paul to receive the gift and participate in giving aid to the saints. That's what they want to do. They want Paul. They wanted to give. They wanted Paul to receive that gift. They wanted to participate in giving aid to the saints. It was going to. So, all right, you got that? Praise the Lord. Let's move on. They not only did this as we had expected, but first, say first. First. In all obedience to God, say in all obedience to God. Obedience to God. God's will, they gave their own selves to the Lord and to us. So first. It was an all obedience to God. They gave us up to God and obeyed Him first above all. Alright, verse 6. This led us to urge... I'm reading out of Weymouth because it's a little, little clearer sometimes. This led us to urge Titus that as he had previously been the one who commenced the work, in other words, he started the work there, so he should now go and complete among you this act of of beneficence or gift. Let me read that out of King James. So in so much that we desire Titus that as he had begun, so he had also finished the same, finished in you the same grace also. Grace, gift, teaching them these principles, teaching them these things. Verse 7, therefore, as you abound in everything, abound in faith and utterance, and knowledge, and in all diligence, and in all your love, see to it that you abound in this grace also. So, Paul here is making reference to 2 Corinthians in this respect that as we abound in faith, 8.4 says, um, praying with much that we receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of ministering to the saints. He says, as you're abounding in faith and utterance and knowledge, and 
and, and, and being in diligence and in love, we should make sure that we are abounding in and participating in giving aid to the saints. It's like you see your brother in need and, and you want to do something. You want, unless God tells you don't do it, the road is open. Now don't, don't be unwise and give everything away. That's, that's not what he's talking about. But I mean, if you, if you want to do something, you want to bless somebody, you can do that. But do it with no strings attached. Amen. And, you know, maybe just do it where they don't know it's even you. Amen. Then there's no way they can repay you. Because they don't know who it was. <laughs> Amen. I like that. When you, you can give to somebody and they don't know it's you, and they receive it and it blesses them and you see it you see their response and you walk away and you're like Lord you Lord Amen. thank you for that opportunity thank you for enabling me to be able to break that yoke off that person with theft yes. sometimes it ain't much sometimes sometimes it's a lot sometimes it's little but it's if you got in it and you do it and it blesses them I mean, you like to receive that way, don't you? Of course you do. So, if you're ready, do it. Praise the Lord. All right. I'm going to read, uh, let's see here. Yeah, Wayman says it this way. Yes, just as you have already are already very rich in faith, Readiness of speech, knowledge, unlimited zeal, and in the love that is in you, implanted by us, see to it that this grace of liberal giving also flourishes in you. Amen. Praise God. That's good. I don't know if you realize how good that is. See, these guys were poor. This is the heart that was in them. They were liberal givers out of what they had. And they didn't have much. They didn't have the comforts of life. They were in hard pressed straits. But they saw somebody else that they could be a blessing to. Amen. And so the Paul saying, because of that richness in them, it abounded and caused them to liberally give to somebody else in need. Not thinking of themselves, they're thinking of them, how they can relieve the other person. Man, it's good. Verse 8. Hallelujah. I not by commandment. You know, Paul said, I'm not commanding you to do this, but it's in the book. So the Holy Spirit had it put in here for us. So it must be something to it, and it must be important to God. Amen. So I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. I'm going to read you a few definitions and then I'm going to sum it up. Occasion is the channel of an act. The ground or reason by which something is or is not done. There was an occasion for them to give. There was an, a channel. Paul, they wanted him to receive it. The ground, or the reason for them wanting to get involved was so they could bless the other saints and relieve them. Forward, this means speed. They did it with speed and haste. They were eager. They were eager to do it. Yeah, this is this is kind of contrary to the Western way of thinking, the way we've grown up, huh? But it's all right here in the Bible. Just look up the words. So they did it with eagerness, haste, earnestness. But you know, they were sincere. The heart was in their doing. The heart was in their giving. See, God loves a cheerful giver. Ones whose heart is in their giving. 
Because they're looking for some, they're looking to do something for somebody else. They're not looking what they can do for me. What am I doing? No, they can care less. God, because what's coming from God is going to keep coming from God as long as I keep my heart right and I'm pleasing Him. Amen. Amen. I'm in the cycle of giving and receiving. Yeah. It's going to continue to flow, yeah. but my heart has got to be right. Yeah. I got to have the right heart motive. Yeah. Jesus said, "You ask not, but and you receive not, because you ask amiss. Yeah. You ask with wrong motives. Right. Make sure." When you give, your motive is right. Amen. 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 Sincerity means legitimate. There was a legitimate reason for him to do it. Watch out for tricksters. That's where the Holy Ghost comes in. It'll show you if somebody's a trickster. And we're not even really necessarily talking about those people. We're talking about ministering to the saints. And some saints are tricksters. They need to repent and get right with God. And if you see a trickster and he's called a saint, well, you know not the fellowship with him, number one, but pray for him that God will grant him repentance to the knowledge and the truth so he can get out of that snare and trap and get his heart right or her heart right and get right with God and stop being a trickster. Because they're in trouble. They are in a snare and they are headed for destruction. So, here to sum it up, it says, as you have opportunity and others are eager or earnest as well, so other people may be involved with this. Show the true, genuine sincerity of your love for the saints by participating and giving aid to the saints in need. We said, who's got a need? We all, most of us raised our hand. Now, I'm not taking up an offering, so just relax. But the point is this. I mean, there's ways to do that and it'd be scriptural, but we're not going to get on that today. But the point is this. Listen to your heart. Do what's in your heart. God leads you through your heart. All right, moving on. Verse number nine. He says right here. Now, in question... What Paul's talking about, the, the churches of Macedonia, they were poor. They were indigent. They didn't have the comforts of life. They barely had anything. They were scraping by. But their heart was rich. And what they had, they wanted to give. They wanted to share to relieve somebody else. And he's talking about that grace that they had to do that. Grace is, as it's talking about here, was a gift. It was a financial gift. Well, grace is also meaning divine influence, ability, benevolence, other things. So it all comes under the umbrella of grace. Now, here he's talking about the heart that was in them, that generous heart. The heart to want to relieve someone else with what they had. They want to do what they could to give relief to somebody else. How many know before we got in Christ and even after we were in Christ, we needed some kind of relief? Amen. We were dead in our trespasses and sins. Amen. We were in the world without God and without hope. Amen. We were destined for destruction. Amen. We were going down. It was just a matter of time. Because yeah. right. we were already dead in spirit and our body would just catch up Sometime in the future. But Jesus, here in verse 9 says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The revelation of his heart is being revealed right here. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Jesus was rich. It says he was rich right here. He was wealthy. He was abounding with wealth. He wasn't just barely getting by in his ministry. He had a thief in the twelve and dipped his hand in the bucket anytime and helped himself to whatever he wanted. And he still had more than enough. 
And if, he, and if his treasure wasn't with him, he sent Peter to go catch a fish to pay their taxes. Yeah. He always abounded with wealth. It overflowed him. It accompanied him. Wherever he went, it was there. Right. Mm. He had the fullness of wealth. And he was full of grace. Yes. And he was full of truth. And he lived in it. And he walked in it. And I remember a few weeks ago, the Lord had a word I brought forth. And one of the things that God told us about him filling our houses with treasures is to walk in the truth. Yes. Do the truth. Walk in the truth. Follow his grace. Live holy. Walk uprightly. Amen. Do justly. Yes. Do what's right. Even if it seems like it's the wrong thing to do. Do what is right because it's the right thing to do. Amen. Amen. Because it's what God says to do. When you do, you'll step up above that mess. See, grace is a benefit. Grace will make you rich. Now listen, he's contrasting these church, church of Macedonians that were poor. And then he's talking about the grace of our Lord and how he was rich. Well, I mean, Jesus was a baby. They bought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That was just to get started. How I many of you started out with a big pot of gold? Amen. Amen. He started out right. He started out rich. He was never poor. Amen. Until later, when he emptied himself. Yeah. And we'll, we'll cover that here. But let me move on. Uh, Jesus, it made Jesus rich. Grace made Jesus rich, and he had to receive grace to become poor. He had grace to be rich, and he had grace to become poor. Here it says, Verse 9, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, the grace made him rich, though yet for your sakes he became poor. And we're going to tell you how he became poor. Now, the reference to our Lord refers to his time on earth. Not when he was in heaven. He was not our Lord Jesus Christ until he came to earth. Because he had to become a man. God had to embody himself to become our Lord. He was our God before that. But here, he said, when he came to Gabriel and Mary, uh, he told him to call his name Jesus. Not to call, he, he was not called Lord until he was anointed and entered into the ministry. How did he become poor? You want to know? He wants to know how he became poor. How did Jesus become poor? Some of you know. Some of you know. I'll share it. But I will share it again. So how did Jesus become poor? Well, you could lose it. You could waste it. You could squander it. Like the uh, the one son did when he had two, the father that had two sons. Yeah. And he ended up eating pig slop. Yeah. And he squandered his. Yeah. But that ain't how Jesus became poor. Jesus, when he died on the cross, And he rose again from the dead. He dispersed his wealth to the church. It's right here. He became poor that you through his poverty, his disbursement of his wealth. And everything Jesus had, he didn't have it for him. He got it for us. And he dispersed that to his body. And so with your faith, you can receive it. Amen. Now, there's other things you're going to have to work and stuff like that, but, I mean, there, there are different planes of prosperity. There are different realms. There's God's system, the world system, and then there's the two working together. Well, how can that work? Well, God blesses the work of your hands, right? right. That's one example of how you can be working in the world and still be operating in God's system. Right. But operating in God's system just totally by itself, we're not even going to go there. Okay. So through his poverty, his disbursement, uh, 
we might be rich if we'll take it by faith. See, in 2 Corinthians 9, 8, it says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have a sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Amen. 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 All sufficiency. This is a beautiful definition of prosperity. You, say this, God, God is able to make all grace abound toward me that I, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. There's a lot of good work that needs to get done. And you're supposed to have sufficiency in all things things yeah. to abound to every good work yeah. to have no lack and come behind in no good thing amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. amen if you're not there yet be encouraged you are on your yeah. but you've learned so far the heart you need to have yeah. right amen. Yes, if you have that heart that's your foundation that's the foundation that, that heart, the right heart, the right motive, just like the church of the Macedonia. I know we keep coming back to that. The Lord keeps hammering that. It's a heart issue today, evidently. It's always a heart issue. It's all about your heart. Because your heart reveals how you're being transformed into the image of Jesus. What you do out of your heart shows work has been done and how much still needs to be done. Ain't none of us arrive. <laughs> Not by any stretch of the imagination. I'm, me, I'm, I got a long way to go. But I am able to see progress. Because if you're seeing progress in your life, that's good. You should see progress in your life. If you're not seeing progress, you're not moving. You should be able to look at my life, meaning yourself. I should be able to look at my life and see progress. I may not be where somebody else is at, but that doesn't matter. I'm not running their race. Amen. I'm running my race. Amen. My foundation is being built. Amen. My house is being built. Yeah. I'm being what the Lord, I'm, Lord's building me up to be what He's got planned for me. Yeah. Amen. 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 Not what somebody else has got planned, but what God has for me. So I run my race, develop where I'm at, in my grace, the grace that's given to me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's move on. Verse 10. And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you who have begun before, not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. See, the Corinthians, they started to do this a year in advance. They started to do this, what Paul was talking about. That's why he's writing to them about it. They're doing it. The churches of Macedonia are doing it. The church of Corinth was going, started to do it a year ago. But they got off somehow. Now he's writing to them and said, Y'all, you started to do this a year ago. You were ready, willing, and able. Your mind was in it. Your heart was in it. You were on the right track. But he says, Now perform the doing of it. Amen. That as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance out of that which you have. Let me read this out of the, uh, the way. Verse 10 says, But in this matter I give you an opinion, for my doing this helps forward your own intentions, seeing that not only have you begun operations, but a year ago you already had the desire to do so. And now complete the doing also in order that just as there was then the eagerness in desiring, there may be, there may now be the accomplishment in proportion to your means. Now I'm going to stop right here. Paul is talking to them about giving out of what they have. 
Let me just go ahead and read the, uh, the next verse here. It says, For assuming, well, look at verse 12, I'm going to read out of King James now. It says, For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man has, and not according to what he has not. And he's talking about, listen, the Macedonian churches were poverty stricken. But they were given out of what they had, not out of what they haven't. You can't give what you don't have. Right? And we don't go into debt, and we don't do it on credit to give. So if you're giving on credit cards, you need to stop it. I'm serious. You're selling the ministries, and you're using your credit card to do it, and you're carrying a balance to date off, forget it. Stop we need God another way. Come on. Amen. I'm serious. And the people out there telling you, put it on your credit card, God's putting on, give me a thousand dollars, put it on your credit card. Turn the channel. Amen. Ain't no more God that I'm an astronaut. Because God isn't going to lead you into poverty. If you listen to him, he'll lead you into prosperity. Amen. If you lose, it's because you ain't listening to him. He will not cause you to lose. He provides for winning. He provides yes. for success. Yes. We get messed up when we get our own thinking into it and try to lean on our own understanding, thinking we can do this and it's going to work out and we'll have it by that time. But then what happens if it don't happen? You're stuck with it. Now you got to work it out. Now you got an extra burden. You don't need it. God don't want it for you. Don't do it. Now, now, if you you have money in the bank and you don't have a debit card, which but you got a credit card and you can just write the check and pay that off, fine. But God won't say no. He said, "Listen to him, because he knows the future." Because you can have that money and God, God in the bank, like we're talking about, and the Holy Spirit check you. Don't put that on your credit card, even though you can pay it off in a month. Why? He's trying to prepare you for something that's coming. Making sure you got provision ahead of time. But if you go and put it on the credit card and you spend it and send it off and then something comes up, something else takes place, you need that. Learn to be led by the Spirit of God. It's so very important. I wish I knew some of the things I'm telling you years ago. I wouldn't have made some of the mistakes I made. <clears throat> but we take what we learn and help other people with it. And no, I'm not charging nobody nothing this morning. I'm not, I'm not taking up an offering for myself. None of that. Free of charge. Praise the Lord. Ain't you glad about that? Amen. <laughs> uh, praise the Lord. All right. He says, I do not urge you to give in order that others may have relief while you are unduly pressed. So he's not saying about his giving to, to give to somebody else and it puts you in the straits. That ain't what he's talking about. But he's talking about in verse 14. It says, but by an equality. That now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want. Amen. And their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. Now let me say this. Equality implies equity, which is fairness or justice in the way people are treated. Equal is the same number, amount, or degree rank or quality or equitable, just or fair. In other words, you're dealing fair and equally, equally with everyone. Now, um, I'm going to read this out of the Weymouth and then I'm going to read it out of the message. I think it's out of the message I want this one. Um, it says, but that by equalization of burdens, your superfluity or your excess, having in the present emergency and then, like we said before, it don't have to be an emergency. 
Well, here he's talking, they're using emergency, supply their deficiency. You ever have somebody call you in there and we're in the streets and it was an emergency situation, they didn't have the funds to do something, but they came to you and you had an excess, you had surplus, and you felt good in your heart about it, and, and so you helped them out, and, and then you sensed the blessing of the Lord on you after that, and God was pleased about what you did. And then, well, this is an example of your excess supplying someone's deficiency. And vice versa. It may be you might have been the recipient. All right? So he says... Uh, let me read again. But that by equalization of burdens, your superfluity having in the present emergency.